All right, we're back with part three, acid-base equilibrium. We are moving on to the acid-base properties of salts. So remember how you had the ability of a conjugate acid-base pair to have um, obviously acidic or basic properties, right? So if the if you have conjugate acid-base pairs and one of them is a weak acid, one of them is a strong acid, or one of them is a weak uh, acid, one of them is a uh, a weak base, you have the ability then to have um, their conjugate um, salts to then have acid or base properties. So if you look at the anion. Is the anion does the anion have the ability to react with water? And if it does, then it can create a um, weak acid, right? Um, and if the anion has the ability to create a weak acid, then it itself is basic, right? because the other product of that reaction is hydroxide. Or you look at the cation's ability to react with water. So the cation of uh, things, metals that are not strong base cations are going to be acidic. So almost all metal cations are acidic, except for, of course, column one and column two, right? Your alkaline earth metals and your alkali metals. Um, and then, of course, there's a combined effect but depending upon your K values and, and all that kind of jazz, and the larger K value, of course, wins in that kind of situation. But we're only going to focus on um, the anions and the cations' abilities to react with water. So the acid-base behavior is, is really dependent upon the structure of, the, um, of your acid or your base. And so if you look at the group, um, and it's when it reacts with, with, or when it's bonded with hydrogen, you have different options, right? So if you're looking at the fourth column, right, where carbon is, uh, CH4 has no acidic or basic properties, right? CH4 is totally neutral. It is not an acid or a base. But then you go to the next column over, you have ammonia, and ammonia is a weak base, right? The next column over, you have water, H2O, and of course that is neutral. Right, the definition of neutral. And then if you go to the next column over, you have a weak acid, you have HF. Um, as you move down the periodic table, you get increasing acid character, right? So HF is a weak acid because the hydrogen is really strongly bound to the fluorine um, and it doesn't readily dissociate. Whereas you go to HCl and now you have the H dissociating from the Cl and it makes a strong acid. Um, and you work your way um, to the left on the periodic table, and you have an increasing base strength. So H2S is a weak acid, pH3 is a weak base, right? And it keeps going like that. So the periodic table can help you to uh, predict whether something's going to be an acid or base. Now, so there's oxy acids. The, um, you have some sort of R group, the rest of your, your molecule, and then you have an O and then an H. Now, if the R is a metal, then this is going to be a base, right? Because then this OH acts as a hydroxide group dissociating from your metal. However, if R is a non-metal, then it becomes an acid, right? So you have, for example, like carboxylic acid, which is um, something that has a, a C bonded to an O bonded to an H, right? And then you have up here a double bonded oxygen and then something else on this side, right? Um, so you have different possibilities here that can affect whether this is a, a more acidic or more basic, right? If it has an electron withdrawing group, meaning that it has something that a high electronegativity, that's going to make it more acidic because it's going to pull electrons away from this bond. So the electrons are going to go away from this bond. And then that's going to make your hydrogen more likely to leave, right, if you have an electron withdrawing group. If you have an electron donating group, then the electron density goes the other way, right, and it makes it very stable in this state. And it's not going to want to really, the hydrogen isn't really going to want to dissociate. Um, so it can get really complicated really quickly. Um, just know that the more electronegative this thing is, or the thing bonded to it, 
that's going to be the more acidic this hydrogen is, the more that this is going to just want to leave. You can also think of this in terms of um, electrons. What do the electrons want to do? Where do the electrons want to be closer to, right? And the electrons going to be want to be closer to the the atom with the higher electronegativity value, right? And so this carbon doesn't have a lot of electronegativity associated with it, but if it was a chlorine, then that has higher electronegativity, right? And that's going to be more electron withdrawing, more electron withdrawing, right? And then something that they don't that I'm not necessarily required to teach you in AP chemistry is about Lewis acids and bases, but um, I'm going to tell you the concept of it. I'm not going to test you on this, but it's really helpful to understand how all organic chemistry works because organic chemistry is driven by Lewis acid base theory. And so in Lewis acid base theory, the acid is defined as the electron pair acceptor. So electron pairs are the key with Lewis acids. And then Lewis bases are electron pair donors. So if you go back to your example of ammonia, right? Ammonia was a base before by all definitions. Like if it's a base by one definition, it's going to be a base by all definitions, right? So ammonia is a base, right? It's, it's a base because it accepts a hydrogen ion, um, according to bronsted lowry acid base theory. It's a base because it increases the OH concentration of a solution, right? According to Arrhenius. And if you look at Lewis acid base theory, it is a base because it has a pair of electrons that it can donate to a bond. So if it takes these electrons and donates it to a bond, like boron here is electron deficient, so it has the ability to accept an electron pair. Remember, boron only has three valence electrons. So when it forms three bonds with fluorines, then it is done, right? It doesn't achieve the octet rule. And boron's actually kind of sad about that. And so when you have ammonia coming across in this situation, ammonia has an electron pair that it can donate to a bond, and you make this beastie, and this beastie shows that the um, Lewis base donated its electron pair to the bond that makes the Lewis acid that is the one that can accept that electron pair. And um, this, is, this is just the way that all organic chemistry reactions are driven by Lewis acid base theory. So I wanted to introduce it to you, give you the idea of the concept so that you can, you know, go on in life and be smarter. All right, so that's the end, right? Um, we have, if you look back at your, um, at the Canvas course, you have the, um, these are, this is the, 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 the PowerPoint here that I just went through. And then here's the other screencast lectures. This is uh, chapter problems from chapter 16 of your Brown textbook. And these are the, this is the answer key as well. So you should take a look at that. Um, and this is the third screencast that's gonna go right here. And the whole lecture series will be complete. Um, enjoy, I will be putting up this acid base equilibrium quiz as a practice quiz. Um, for you so that you can figure out how well you know the concepts that I just taught you. All right, so good luck. Email me with any questions and I'll talk to you later.